Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in this video we're going to be looking at the update 1.83 Masters of the Sea preliminary notes. And these are the notes for the update 1.83 dev server we had a few days ago. Uh, I haven't gone over them fully but there are a lot of parts of uh, them I've already uh, been through in specific videos. But I thought why not create a video just looking at the notes themselves, just so you know exactly what is coming in the patch uh, when it comes to fixes and changes. Uh, we're not really going to be talking about many vehicles uh, in this video because uh, the majority of the vehicles coming in the updates I've already covered in separate videos by themselves. I will be talking about general themes of the update though and also looking at changes to pre-existing vehicles in War Thunder. So uh, obviously the theme of update 1.83 is ship OBT. Now OBT is coming for the US, German and Soviet ships so when update 1.83 comes out you will be able to play all three nations uh, as you please. At the same time, they're also adding some premiums to those nations to make it easier f uh, for you to grind uh, if you want to take them. For me personally, I really enjoy rank 1 and rank 2 ships, so the premiums are kind of redundant for me because I'll enjoy grinding through it. But if you're a person who wants to get up to the top echelon uh, of the ships, such as destroyers and light cruisers, there may be something for you to look out for. At the same time, uh, with these three nations going into OBT, the Royal Navy is coming to the game in CBT form. What this means is that uh, there are two packs available that you have to buy uh, one of them in order to get access to the Royal Navy CBT. There will also be some kind of system uh, which is revolves around uh, doing daily tasks in order to be able to get access to the Royal Navy. So if you don't want to buy one of those packs, uh, you can do these daily tasks and you will also be able to get into the ship, uh, the Royal Navy ships. Uh, and you will also be able to keep all of the research uh, that you do in Royal Navy in the CBT form. So all of these four nations uh, that are getting added, you will be able to research and you will keep all of the research that you get from them. On top of this, we're also getting some German helicopters and uh, we're getting a premium one. Then we're getting uh, three which are... Properly, well, no, no, we're not. <laughs> Let's go through them. So you have a premium helicopter. You have two very similar versions of that helicopter in the tree. You then have an MI-24. You then have a UH. And then you then have a French helicopter. So overall, you have six German helicopters. This is very similar to what we see in the Soviet tree. Very similar to what we see in the American tree. So overall, that's another new tech tree that's getting added to the game. So that's five technical tech trees. Uh, that are coming in the space of one updates. What this basically means on top of some ground vehicles, on top of some air vehicles as well, we're getting a, over 50 vehicles uh, in this update, last time I checked. I will make sure to update my spreadsheet to make sure that uh, that is correct. But when I counted, it's an insane amount of stuff. A lot of people in the last update said that there was... I don't know what Bernard's doing. I apologize if you hear that. But anyway, in, um, uh, last update, we got a lot of rank six stuff. And uh, uh, a lot of players, including me, were kind of disappointed by this. Because obviously, grinding it out 380,000, 390,000 RP is not something that is very easy to do. And on top of this, uh, there was a lot of vehicles which were seen as uh, redundant or at least not fitting a lot of people's playstyles. You know, the TAM, the Warrior, even the BMP2. Not many people, or at least the uh, a smaller majority of the community, enjoy these uh, vehicles. Like, I am part of, uh, you know, that part of the community. But a lot of people want to see good meta vehicles. They want to see machines which are going to be competitive. And uh, update 1.81 brought a lot of them at top tier, but nothing anywhere else. What we're seeing in this update is much more of a focus on vehicles which are going to be all tiers, uh, since all the ships are rank 1 to 4, and also some other vehicles uh, to help with that. So overall, for me, this update is looking a hell of a lot better just on the face of things than update 1.81, but it does heavily rely on if you enjoy ships or not, because obviously the majority of the content is going to be ships. So uh, let's have a look at uh, this. Uh, uh, let's have a look at these preliminary notes. So first of all, you have all the vehicles. Uh, obviously, the naval fleet, the USA, Germany, and Soviet lines, the helicopters for the Germans, 
the ground vehicles, uh, the T32E1, SU57B, and then the Type 75 MLRS and the T80B. For the aircraft, you have two updated Wildcats, a JU288C and an MB175T. So there is a little bit uh, here. I'm incredibly surprised with all of the other tech trees to have some ground vehicles and some aircraft is like a very nice added bonus to all of this. And also, I'm sure... In the uh, coming months, we should also have some events which have some special vehicles. So that, to me, uh, is looking great. I pretty much covered all of these vehicles. Uh, there are a few which I didn't cover, mainly ships. I also didn't really have a look at the F4Fs uh, because they're just updated models. And I also didn't do a full video by itself on the TADB. So uh, the TADB, the armor package that it's getting, because it is just an up, uh, it's just a modification that's being added. You know how the T-64B, uh, it goes to the BV with the uh, added ERA on top of it? Well, that's what happens to the TADB. It's getting contact one armor, which is exactly the same as the armor that you see on the T-64B. So it's going to be good against heat. It's going to be good at uh, bouncing or absorbing some shells. And uh, with that said, it gets a little bit of increased protection. It also increases weight, though, so we're going to have to see how that uh, ties into everything. Overall, what we have uh, from the TADB is uh, a very small upgrade to what it already has. Will it make a massive difference? I mean, when you look at the matter of what people are slinging about, not particularly, um, but it'll be good against vehicles which aren't fully upgraded. Uh, against vehicles that are fully upgraded, it will still have the same issues that it has today. Uh, on top of this, we also had two new locations. Uh, so we have the Black Sea ports, and then the increased uh, detailization of the naval location, Green Mountains Gulf. Both of these maps I had a look at on the dev server. Uh, they look pretty bog standard. The main issue is that the smaller ships do not have control of two of the points. Uh, the larger ships have control of two of the, uh, two of the points. So with that said you have a scenario where you are very much burdened towards what the larger ships are going to do. So uh, it's definitely a two higher tier maps, and if you're in a smaller ship, you still have the same issues as, uh, as before. You also now can get naval missions in custom battles. This is a really nice change. Uh, the reason this is a nice change is because before you had to create user missions, or you had to try and... Uh, try and um, get everybody into a single battle in the events tab. Uh, now you can just play custom missions and custom battles uh, with people in the naval uh, in the naval part of it. This means that uh, it would be great for me, for intros, for cinematics and stuff like that. And for the average person, it means that you can have a little bit of uh, fun, maybe uh, test some uh, vehicles and see how good they are against others, you know, get some mates around and have a bit of fun. So, it's time to have a look at the ground vehicle model, damage model characteristic, and weaponry changes. So the first one, the SU-51, M4A-176W, M4A-276W, and Flak Panzer 1 Gepard, the order of ammunition usage has been refined. So this will mean where it picks up ammo uh, from initially it will be different to uh, what it had before. The Churchill Mark III, and then the Panzerkampfwagen Churchill, which is a captured Churchill Mark III in the German tree, a premium. The armor on the right side of the turret has been changed from 76.2 to 88.9, and the armor on the left side of the turret is 76.2 millimeters. So if, you, <laughs> so if you're going to angle against the target, make sure to try and use that right side of the turret instead of the left side of the turret, which is uh, kind of interesting. The Churchill Mark III, generally, uh, its armor isn't uh, that good. The only Churchill that has armor which really stands up is the Mark VII. Uh, but uh, with this added change, it will catch a lot of people off guard. And it does mean if you angle that right side and people uh, try and shoot it, they definitely won't uh, have as much success as before. So overall, it's a buff to the machine. There's a new type of explosive material, smoke forming composition, has been added to the smoke shells. The type of the explosive su substance has been used for all smoke shells and replaced the TNT used previously. 
that's kind of interesting. I wonder what effect that will have. Because before, uh, what you could do is with smoke shells, you could actually, because it had a bit of TNT in it, you could kill vehicles quite, uh, well, not well, but if there was anything lightly armored, uh, you could smoke it and actually do damage. I wonder now with this new smoke forming composition, if we're going away from explosive mass and we're actually going towards uh, something which won't be as potent. And that means that uh, the smoke shells won't be as good against uh, lighter vehicles. I mean, most of the time you shouldn't be using smoke shells to shoot people anyway, but <laughs> when in the uh, in the circumstances that you do, this may have a very slight difference. We're going to have to see the uh, values of this explosive material when it comes out. The vertical elevation speed of cannons for tanks and self-propelled guns, where the guidance was done manually with a shoulder rest, has been increased. Ah, so everybody is getting uh, a buff when it comes to <laughs> the uh, shoulders. Uh, one of the things that we've seen with the Conqueror and the FV405, I actually made a joke about the Conqueror. Because the Conqueror's reload, it's going down from 17 to 10 seconds, so it's getting quite a large buff. And I said, oh, uh, Gajin have finally realized British loaders have two arms. And it's true, because a lot of the time, when it comes to these changes in reload, it, it, it does come down to the subjective view of how much should a loader be able to load, like how quick should it be able to load. Now we're seeing with the shoulder rest thing, it's been increased and uh, the elevation speed. And once again, this t is kind of a subjective thing. You know, how good are you at moving something manually? This is going to differ from person to person. You're going to have a standard uh, that somebody should comply by but when we're talking about maximum efficiency how good is it going to be so for cannons up to calibers of 40 millimeters 15 degrees per second and for cannons of calibers between 40 and 57 millimeters 10 degrees per second okay so uh, that's a lot better than it was before this means that the majority of the machines uh, when it comes to either AA or SPGs, they're going to get their guns on target a lot faster and uh, hopefully they'll have a little bit less wobble. And uh, overall, this will make uh, quite a large difference uh, to the stability of guns and also the quickness in order of you getting your gun on target. It looks like it's mainly affecting uh, medium tanks and light tanks though of the lower ranks, uh, which makes sense because those are the ones which mainly have shoulder rests <laughs> or manually um, when the guidance was done manually with shoulder rest. So we have a bunch of rank 1 British vehicles, rank 1 Japanese, rank 1 French, and then rank 1 German. So this will change uh, slightly some of those vehicles, making them a little bit improved. The Flak Panzer 341, the name of the Flak Panzer 5, has been corrected to Coelian. Well, it doesn't say to Coelian, but it does say corrected Coelian. My guess is the reason why they changed the Flak Panzer, or sorry, the Coelian to the Flak Panzer 341, I've no idea why they just did, and it looks like they're changing it back. Uh, if I'm reading that wrong, I apologize. The Manda 3H, uh, the values of the angles of, uh, for elevation and traverse speed have been specified. So this is for the Marder 3H. The Marder line of tank destroyers is actually pretty good. And the reason for this is because they've got good maneuverability. Uh, it's quite hard to one-shot them until you, unless you hit them center mass. And they all have a really good gun on it with a really good ammunition. And the ammunition really makes uh, makes these machines great because... When you penetrate a target, you know you're going to do a lot of damage to it, and that is something that some tank destroyers definitely struggle with. Like the SU-122, uh, it's quite hard to pen, and when you do pen with something like the Heat, then you're not always going to do a lot of damage. With the Marder 3 h with its gun, when you pen with its either APHE or APCBC, you know you're going to pen and clatter whatever is inside. The elevation is going from negative 2 plus 22 to negative 9 plus 9. Now, a lot of people may see this as a nerf. Uh, for me personally, I see this as a buff. And the reason for this is because it means that the majority of the time where you're going to be using your gun depression over slight hills or over uh, little areas, you're going to be able to use that to great effect now. Generally, 10 degrees of gun depression is what we look for as a really good, you know, good sets for gun depression. Nine degrees is pretty pretty close to that and it means that you'll be able to set up in positions looking down roads and things a lot easier. 
when it comes to the elevation, I mean, uh, it just means that fighting up hills, no, sorry, fighting down hills is going to be a little bit harder, but still 9 degrees is completely fine. You won't be able to shoot aircraft out, out of the air, but uh, generally if aircraft are flying around, the Marder 3s are struggling anyway <laughs> because of their open top nature. The Traverse is going down by 2, so it's going from minus 30 to plus, uh, sorry, it's going from minus 30 plus 30 to minus 28 plus 28. So it's losing 2 degrees either way. Uh, this is slightly annoying, especially for the Marder 3H, because it does have a really good angle that you can set at around corners. Uh, I do see this as kind of annoying. Uh, I it, It's going to have to see. I mean, it's 4 degrees overall, so it's not a massive thing, and I think... Uh, Taking the gun depression and losing four on the traverse, I'm happy with that. If uh, we didn't gain anything on the elevation, uh, then yeah, uh, it wouldn't be very nice. But uh, it, it can be, it can, it can be done. Uh, it's still a very good vehicle. The M247, uh, the bug where no lead marker was displayed whilst firing at aircraft has been fixed. Or brake effect bug on the chassis has been fixed. Wonderful. So the M247 came out in update 1.81. One of the interesting things was that it released with no radar-guided AA, and uh, this was obviously seen by a lot of people as annoying, because in real life it did have it. A lot of people then bring up the fact that on certain tests, uh, let's just say it wasn't exactly uh, admirable uh, for what it was supposed to do, but it still did have it in real life. It still had the system, and if we uh, decided to try and uh, judge every vehicle by it screwing up in tests a lot of vehicles in war thunder would not even be in the game or they would not be able to take off or they would not be able to move or their gun would uh, break the whole thing so yeah there's um there there yeah i i think having a little bit of lenience in this is completely fine also, the hull brake effect bug, you got to remember the M247 is on a medium tank chassis, very much similar to something like the Chieftain Marksman. So for the hull to be subject to hull brake doesn't really make a lot of sense. The turret can at least be a, a question, you know, you can debate it, but the chassis, no. Otherwise, you would have to have stuff like the M48 and the M60, they should also be hull broken, which is kind of ridiculous. The IS-2, a bug when you could separately control coaxial MG has been fixed, so I'm guessing you can't control them anymore, that's very sad. Uh, the 120mm DM-13, round mass has been increased from 3 to 4.4 kilos. Ooh, okay, so this is quite a large buff to the Leopard A1A1 L44, and also the Leopard 2K, and I'm not sure if the 2A4 gets the DM-13. Uh, but even though th those two vehicles that I noted before, this is a decent buff. This means when you penetrate, you're going to do a lot more post-penetration damage. Now, generally, that gun is already very good, so adding this to it just makes it better, and that is completely fine. Uh, so uh, we will see a lot more one shots, but you're still going to have to place your targets, uh, place your shots pretty well. The 100 to 150 millimeter N9M117 max ATGM controllable distance has been increased from four to five kilometers. Okay, uh, so this is a large. Well, it's a buff to. I wouldn't say it's large, but it's a buff to um, some rank six Soviet vehicles, and also, I believe the T55 AM, which sub should be a rank six, but it's a rank five, uh, fits into this category as well. Uh, this means that shooting out aircraft or helicopters uh, means that you can hit them from a bit longer of a range. Most maps, I think all maps, I'll be incredibly surprised if you could make a 5km shot on any map unless you're shooting at something in the air. So this doesn't really make that much of a difference. It just means uh, that against stuff like aircraft you're going to be a little bit better. The 30mm APDS, the type of shell has been changed from APCR to APDS. The penetration of the shell at meeting angles other than normal has been increased. So this thing is going to do more damage once again. Uh, I'm fine with APDS. The issue for a long time, uh, which has been fixed with a lot of vehicles, was the HVAP rounds. And this was the issue with stuff like the Kugel. 
even the Falcon when it came out, the Gepard when it came out having full HVAC belts. So if the, I think ABDS is okay. I still, uh, I still sit in the area with uh, AA where they should just have HE or, uh, you know, they should have APHE. Something that can knock barrels and tracks but not go around killing everything in its wake. The AEC Mark II, the maximum speed has been reduced from 78 to 68, oh dear. The AEC Mark II has lost some speed. It could never get to 78 anyway, so <laughs> reducing it to 68, as long as it doesn't affect the acceleration, it shouldn't really matter. The STRV, uh, the 8.4cm Rogger uh, M53 smoke round has been added, ammo and weapon names have been updated. So, its gun now has a new name, HEAP and APDS all have their own name. Cool. Uh, so this makes it a bit more historical uh, when it comes to actually labeling it as a Swedish vehicle. And adding the smoke round means that it has a little bit more flexibility. So we have some aircraft model, damage model characteristic and weaponry changes. 18 inch Mark 15 torpedo is now correctly displayed on the info card. The masses, sorry, so, well that's good, it means that you know what you're using. Uh, the SM79 Series 4 injection modification has been removed. Oh dear, what a shame. Uh, it's only an SM79 though. The pseudo bomber hunter. God damn, the SM79s are... Uh, I've had a lot of fun with them over the years, but they are not great vehicles <laughs> when we compare them to what they should be. You know, the Arc Sapphires on the turret are uh, very substandard. The 12.7s that some of them have is fun, but that's all you can really say. The maneuverability is great. The bomb loads are substandard. And overall, even if you get one engine knocked out, it's very hard to keep them in the air. So they're not the best vehicles, but they will always... Uh, uh, they will always have a special place in my heart because I have all of them in the German tree. The PB5, uh, the engine display and x-ray view has been fixed and number of engine cylinders is now displayed correctly. Well, that's lovely. Uh, it just means that if you want some more information on the PBY, it's easier to get. Issue with the PBY right now, um, I flew it out maybe about 10 times the other day. Every time I flew it out, there was a HE100. And, or a BF-109 E1, and after a few hits from the 792s, my, my tail just fell off. And I don't know why, or I don't know how, but yeah, uh, the, the tail on that thing is incredibly flimsy, and just shears from the fuselage, and it's very annoying. Uh, so now we have some naval fleet model, damage model characteristic, and weaponry changes. Uh, multiple vessels now have side and bow mounted bomb launchers as modifications. These can be launched by pressing the R key in the direction of the camera view. I must have changed that button because I definitely don't hit the R key, but that's pretty cool. Uh, I actually showed them on the dev server, so what that means is you actually launch stuff like depth charges to the right or the left. Uh, you also have the mortar thing on the front of it, but that was there before on certain, certain vehicles like one of the US, I believe the 165 footer. Uh, but it is uh, it is nice to have these. Uh, it is nice to have some historical mechanic. The issue is I don't really see the use in them <laughs> right now, if I'm quite honest. So uh, unless uh, unless you are a larger vehicle and you see a torpedo or a torpedo boat coming, uh, then and at, at very specific angles, may I add, uh, yeah, uh, there's not really a lot you'll be able to do. Uh, the the armor types have been added. Now naval vessels have bulletproof, fragmentation proof, rolled or cast homogenous armor depending on the vessel. Now this is something which I think eventually, once all of the armor and stuff is added in for all of the vehicles, like all of the armor models, then the naval uh, meta will change. Because right now it's very focused around uh, high fire rates, high velocity uh, guns, which uh, do a lot of damage. And what I'm talking about here is low tier. And... Once you start adding in armor for everything, or at least some armor, the use of HE, I feel like, is going to go down, and the use of stuff like AP is going to go up. So, I'm hoping that once these armor types are added, once all of the armor models are all in-game, then we'll have a situation where there'll be a little bit more what-should-we-do kind of thing, like which shell is the best, instead of just, uh, yes, this will always be the best shell. 
The fragmentation effect has been reworked, spread and damage have become more realistic. Depending on the ammo weight and shard type, the resulting fragmentation may be different in weight, number and total damage. All shards spread according to diagram for a damage sector. Additionally, one round may produce shards that vary in their weight and penetration power. So they have really reworked the fragmentation system. I wonder if they'll ever bring that to ground forces, or maybe it's already in uh, ground forces, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, what this means is uh, it is obviously more realistic. It means that the damage that you'll do to a machine is more realistic. One of the things I definitely saw on the dev server compared to the CBT that we're in right now, it was very hard to kill everybody in a, in a ship. I was getting people down to 6 or 3%, and or, ma or mainly just 6%, and it was very hard to find the the final crew members with all of the all of the machine black that I was shooting. And obviously, even if you have 6% crew, you can still fire all of your guns. So I think with these fragmentation changes and with the increased survivability of these machines, we're going to have a situation where uh, we it's going to be harder to kill larger ships with smaller ships. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. I'm not exactly sure exactly, but that, from my testing, that seems to be what's going on here. And this is emphasized by the next part. Naval vessel DMs have been reworked. So artillery upper structures, torpedo launches, and other deck-based components are now more vulnerable to explosions, shards, and direct hits. And your armored up upper structures can be damaged, so they won't function even with MG fire. That's great to hear. Uh, that means that uh, you can knock out components of other ships, even if, uh, even if you are, let's say, at a disadvantage to the ship that you face. At least you can do some damage to it. Internal modules may also be damaged by explosions, kinetic damage, shards, and fire in different situations. This boiler compartments are more vulnerable to direct hits and shard damage, unlike controls that are much more vulnerable to explosions. So, in different sectors are vulnerable to different things. And this is something that is great, because it means that they are modeling in the difference between each of the components of the ship when it comes to what damage they can take. And this is good. Instead of having everything the same, there should be more vulnerable parts of the ship. There should be parts of the ship which are much more vulnerable to specific types of weaponry. And it's lovely to see this is getting added. Engines situated in drowned compartments, as well as transmission and ammunition rooms, will be damaged or become unavailable until the water is pumped out of that section. Very similar to how we see in ground forces. Great addition. Very hard to fix an engine when it's underwater. Uh, fragmentation proof blankets or screens, whilst a hole will prevent shards from penetrating dependent on the blanket's thickness and the damage power of the fragments. I'm guessing that is for specific ships that have fragmentation proof blankets and or screens. It basically just makes it so you can tank more damage from shells which fragmentate more. So mainly HE and uh, stuff like that and shrapnel shells. Survivability and resistance towards different types of uh, damage have been reworked for the sections occupied by the crew. An explosion or dense fragmentation will inflict much greater damage than a single AP round that penetrates through a vessel without internal fragmentation. So as you can see, this is what I was talking about before, where HE is much more useful now. But the problem is, we don't have the fully outer uh, armor model of the skeletons done yet, and what this means is that... HE is always going to be the way to go, unless you are shooting something which has a decent amount of uh, armor on it, and no ship in game, apart from some of the heavier uh, ships at the top, so maybe the light cruisers and some of the destroyers which have belts on them, there is no reason to fire AP at them, uh, because it's just going to go straight through, uh, unless you are maybe trying to annihilate an ammo storage, but even then, HE will also do the job, so... As I said, we need to find a way of making every round in itself useful. Larger vessels can survive a hit by a light torpedo, SCT-40 for example, however they will suffer severe damage. So you can now survive torpedoes. One of the problems before is that 
If you hit a torpedo, it was a one-shot, one-kill, nothing you could do. And for me, this was okay, uh, even though unrealistic, because it meant that smaller ships could do something against destroyers. Now, they have less of a chance, but it's still, you know, it's still quite easy to one-shot destroyers. Uh, when it comes to torpedoes, you're just going to make sure you hit. The DM has been reworked for the German SF-40, so these are the flak barges, the 88 and the 20 millimeters. Uh, the crew has been moved to the upper deck and artillery deck, so this will mean that they are much more vulnerable uh, to being able to shot, uh, being able to be hit. Uh, so this is good. It means that because one one of the things you would do with these flak barges is you would take out a ton of their crew, which was on deck. And then you would hit up the rest of it, but it would be very hard to kill those last crew members in the center because they just wouldn't die. Uh, it was as simple as that. So uh, a lot of uh, SF-40s would be left on about 20% crew, and you couldn't kill them uh, because of where the crew is situated. So now they're in a much more prevalent position. It should be easier to kill them. Upper deck structure is now protected with 10mm rolled armor that contains most of the crew. However, the control cabin remains unprotected. Poor guys in the control cabin. But 10mm uh, should be fine for the majority of things, and still the SF-40s, the main way to kill them is torpedoes. All MGs and autocannons up to 20mm now have stabilization, as even without a mechanical stabilize stabilizing mechanism, a gunner was still able to stabilize him it's himself. So this is once again a buff to the lads who are shoulder mounting everything, and uh, also it means that your guns are not just going to go up all over the place in ships, uh, which is great. Correct radio cabin dimensions have been added for all vessels. The crew is placed depending on the vessel type and historical data. Now this means that there will be two key areas to shoot for crew now, uh, on top of all the other areas which will also have crew. So uh, once again adding to the uh, survivability of all of these ships. Uh, a new criteria for vessel destruction has been added. When massive damage from an explosion is received, it depends on the vessel's size and class, they may still be destroyed even if their total crew value is not lower than required minimum standard to class the ship as previously inoperable. So this is hull break for ships. Uh, <laughs> it's the best It's the best way I can put it. Uh, this means that torpedoes against uh, the majority of ships are still going to be 1 to 0 deadly. Uh, it also means that uh, if you create an explosion on a ship, so let's say an ammunition blow up or something like that, you don't have to hunt down the last crew members. This does mean, though, you do need to be able to create that type of explosion, and at low tiers, it's going to be quite hard for a lot of ships to do that. So overall, this will affect larger ships quite a lot. It will mean uh, for me uh, when I, you know, have a think about it. Uh, the main issue is when you hit ammo on a destroyer, it'll become a who will RNG the ammo first, and who has access to stuff like ammo wetting and stuff like that. The MBK-161 Mod 44 Soviet Armoured Boats has received its historical camo, lovely to see. The German LS-class reserve torpedo boats has been renamed the LS uh, to LS-3. The reason for this is because they're adding in a premium LS. I believe it's called the LS-4. And the only difference between uh, the LS3 and the LS4, it's going to be the 250 GE German premium, so it's going to be the starter premium uh, for German ships, uh, is that it has a 20 millimeter in the turret instead of a 15. So it should be a little bit more deadly. Overall, not that much different, though. The maximum speed of the German K2 Kanonen boot has changed from 30 to 18.6 knots according to historical information. That's a big nerf, uh, but uh, that is only max speed. Remember, a lot of the time, the main attribute which matters more is acceleration and deceleration. Looping torpedoes around the same area by launching during a sharp turn has been fixed. Damn! <laughs> I can't curve my torpedoes anymore like I <laughs> like the bullets and wanted. How dare they? <laughs> The appearance of fuel tanks in X-ray view have been visually improved and is now the same for all ships. Lovely. Uh, so we can now see where everything is. Once again, all of these changes are great. Like it, it's it's lovely to see ship OBT finally coming or naval OBT. And I personally really enjoy rank one and two. 
I understand uh, people want to play the destroyers and the larger ships. You know, you go ahead. You enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy my little fun boats where you go fast, where the action is really fast. And, you know, there, there's stuff going on all over the place. And to me, that is very interesting. The economy and research. Achievements for naval vessels have been added. Makes sense. Battle tasks for naval vessels have been added. Also makes sense. Uh, the US and Soviet helicopters are now available for research. Oh, so they're in OBT now. There you go. So if you didn't do, if you didn't buy into the US and Soviet helicopters, or if you didn't do the helicopter stars, now they're available for everyone. So you're not just getting three ship trees in OBT, you're also getting two helicopter trees in OBT, and then you got the Germans if you did the stars. If you didn't do the stars, you're going to have to buy into the German one, and then you've got the Royal Navy. So you've got two tech trees in CBT, and you're getting four into OBT. As I said, uh, no, five even, sorry, because US and Soviets are different. So five tech trees into OBT. As I said, a lot of stuff this update. Uh, the cost of the PR-159 Soviet vessel has been significantly reduced. Always nice to see. Uh, the... RP gain in ships, uh, for me, is completely fine right now. It's nice to see that some of the destroyers got reduced uh, at some point, meaning that it will be quite easy to, or at least easier, to research them. The new 3D decorations helmets, both armor and infantry, have been added for various nations. Old 3D decorations have been moved to the respective section. Uh, there's actually a now a... Uh, parts of the decorations tree for helmets and what is pretty cool is there are some helmets there that are new so there's some italian uh, tank helmets which are nice to see there's also some other new helmets so look forward to them i know a lot of people aren't really hyped for decorations but for me stuff like decals and decorations are cool things uh, you know they're they're nice little things to get from uh from events and from other stuff so lovely to see there's new camos added for the F4, F3 and the F4, F4. If you want to see these uh, camos, I did look at them in the new air vehicles for in the dev server update 1.83 video. So if you want to see that, you know, just go back on the channel and you'll see it. Naval vessel control tips have been added to the loading menu. I'm guessing it's something like press spacebar to fire torpedo or don't get shot. Uh, game mechanics, a bug that caused the third person camera view to be reversed has been fixed. I run into that bug quite a lot, and I would like to know what caused that. I don't, I, it's nice that it's fixed, but I just want to know what I was doing to do that, because I was very confused when it would happen. I would be looking one way, and then, you know, I'm, I'm on the other side now. A bug where the camera focused on the rear end of a naval vessel at the end of a battle has been fixed. Uh, so uh, that's good, I suppose, even though it doesn't really affect anything uh, since it's at... Oh, no, it's at the start of a battle. Never mind. Okay, so that affects a lot. Good that they fixed that. Uh, it is now possible to capture points in naval battles with hydroplanes and seaplanes. Kingfisher, you're coming back. Well done. Welcome back to the party. You now have a use in the game. Also, the F1M2, the BV238, <laughs> the Catalina with its, uh, you know, the C1. Uh, there's also the hydroplane with uh, the the German one, you know, the HE51 with the uh, the hydroplane things. There's there's a bunch of them. Uh, just like how helicopters can now capture points, you too have this mechanic that you will never use because you will never get anywhere close to it because guess what? Ground and sea vehicles exist and they'll annihilate you. How wonderful. Anyway, there's some sound changes as well. Sounds for new helicopters has been added and small changes to optimize the usage of the sound game resources. So hopefully there isn't too many changes in the sound so we can still get those wonderful sound mods working uh the one the sound mods that people create for war thunder have been very fun uh over the years and i hope they continue so overall as you can see a lot of changes mainly to naval stuff because it is the update for naval it is the naval obt it's the big one it's been what we've been waiting for for a few years hopefully a lot of people play it i know for a fact i'm going to and there's also some changes to a lot of other vehicles and stuff as well. Overall, very positive. There are not many changes here that I would say are unnecessary or are bad changes. Uh, I am kind of annoyed about the Marder one, but as long as it's historical, completely fine with it. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.